this, this idea an tahkumu bil adl is a little bit different from an ta'dilu. An ta'dilu could mean and you'll be fair. The, the wording could have been much more brief. Oh, an tuqsitu, you, you'll be fair. But Allah says an tahkumu bil adl. What that does is that you will make judgments and other people will make judgments, but they will use other things. But you will use justice. In other words, when we pass judgments on people, there are other things at play. And you're going to have to remove all of them, and the only tool you can use is adl. Right? Because for some people, it will be race that will be at play. For some people, it will be their own experience that will be at play. Let's just give you a simple example. You know, uh, a lot of people, when they have a lot of free time, they watch things, you know, daytime courtroom drama, like, you know, Judge Judy type stuff, right? And they, they love to watch somebody get humiliated and not heard or yelled at or whatever. But imagine a scenario where there's something like a divorce court, right? And the judge himself went through a divorce. So the guy went through a rough divorce and he lost everything. And now there's a court case in front of him and there's a, you know, guy, a man and a woman that are getting divorced. He doesn't see a man and a woman. He sees, he sees that woman, he sees his ex-wife who took everything. And he's going to wreck her in this case because in his head, it's, he's already made a judgment based on his own experience. His own personal experience is now tainting his opinion of how he should judge this case, you understand? So that's actually him utilizing his personal experience, his anecdotal experience, as opposed to justice. But he has the title and he can use the law. Just because you're using the law, you don't have to be ju just. I mean, people that have dealt with lawyers know that. They say, well, what, what do you want to win? If nobody says, I'm going to a lawyer to get justice. They say, I want to win this case. And the lawyer says, well, you want, to be, you want to be fair? No, no, I just want to win this case. Like sometimes when you go to a crooked accountant, they don't say, hey, hey I'm going to do your taxes. They say, how much you want to pay in taxes? <laughs> you know, because cause the, the idea being that I'm going to make this work legally. There are loopholes I can use. Our concern isn't justice. Our concern is getting you what you want. Right? That's our primary concern. Then you put justice aside. So sometimes we make judgments. And other factors, other motivations are at play. But Allah says the motivation that needs to be at play is justice itself. So now let's talk about justice, because we're going to talk about it in four ways, four, four dimensions of it. The word adl is being used. There are other words in Arabic for justice, but the word that's being used in this ayah is al-adl. إِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ The word adl actually comes in Arabic from the word idl. And idl was, you know, in old times they, they didn't have like cars with big trunks and, you know, vans and trucks and things like that. Their truck was a camel. That's what they had. And, you know, the camel is pretty skinny on top. So you can't keep loading stuff on top. It'll fall off. So what they used to do is put a bunch of luggage on one side, tie it to a rope and equal weight luggage on the other side so it can carry the whole load. Because they can't, if they can't put that all, all that stuff on top, because they don't have flat trunk space on the, on the camel. So they've got to put weight on both sides and tie it together. Now obviously if one side is heavier than the other, then it's going to tip over. Or it's going to hurt the camel, because it, it's going to have more pressure on one side of its body than the other. So the two sides have to be the same weight for it to be able to walk. You understand? So one side of that, when it's equal in weight to the other side of that, that's called a idl. And from it came the idea of things being balanced, or things being of equal weight, of things being scaled. And obviously you're familiar, if you go to any courtroom in the world, or any symbol of justice, if you, if you even like Google image justice, right? What are the images associated with justice? You'll see maybe a blind lady holding a scale and the scale's balanced, or you'll see just a scale and things are balanced. The idea of things being equal measure is associated with justice, right? So now let's think about that for a moment. What does it mean that when you and I make judgments, that we make them with justice? The first of them I already kind of alluded to. If you have any kind of bias, if you have any kind of bias, somebody could have a bias towards Muslims, somebody else could have a bias towards non-Muslims. You could say, oh man, this judge, he hates, he hates Muslims and he, you know, he went after me or whatever. But it could be a Muslim society and it's a Muslim judge and he hates Hindus and there's a Hindu guy standing in front of him and he goes against him because he used his bias against Hindus to make that judgment. So if it's a personal bias based on religion, it's a bias based on race, it's a bias based on economic class or gender or personal experience, because sometimes in our, in our families you have six kids, you can't even remember their names, 
but you know one of them you like more than the other. When an argument happens, this one's, you're always favoring this one, never that one. Why can't you be more like him? No, no, if, he, if there's a fight, you must have done something wrong. Because you already have a bias, you're kind of leaning towards one of them, so the other one gets the shorter end of the stick every time. This is a bias, which means one side weighs heavier than the other. So you can't have justice. So the first problem with justice is bias, is, is actually bias. And we have to check ourselves, ask ourselves, are we people of bias? I'm reminded of a famous story of at the time when Umar radiallahu anhu served as the Supreme Court judge. And a great companion of the Prophet وسلم, Ali radiallahu anhu, had a disagreement with a Jewish man. And they had a case about some money and that, that was owed. And they came to, uh, you know, some assets that were owed. And they came to Umar radiallahu anhu and of course, the job of a judge is to hear both sides. So he asks both sides, what happened? And so he asked the Jewish man and he told his story, you know. And then he turned to Ali and said, Amma ant ya Aba Hassan, father of Hassan, what do you say? Aba Hassan means father of Hassan, and that's a nickname. Ali said, wait, wait, hold on. When you called him, you called him by his actual name. You called me by a nickname, you're biased. We don't want your judgment, thank you. And he left. Because I mean, he was a little bit soft, even in the way the, that he addressed him, right? And they were sensitive to that, because they understood something. They understood that even that much can tilt the scales, and I, I, don't, I don't want to mess with that. I want to be absolutely fair. I want to be absolutely 100% fair. Can you imagine? This idea that there's somehow any bias can make its way in a judgment that will go in my favor. That will go in my favor. And what do, what do people do nowadays? When you're about to be judged, you know, in, in, in criminal societies, then you want to butter up, you want to bribe the, the judge, or you want to, you know, if, if there's going to be, you know, dad says, I'm going to decide who I'm going to, you know, give the car to, I'm going to make a decision. That night you decide to massage dad's feet. You know, <laughs> you're trying to skew the judge's opinion in your favor in some way at that point, right? And that's also, that's the first problem when, when justice goes away. When you are, Making verdicts between people, do not let anybody do you favors. Do not let anybody tilt your scale. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves, and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in. And don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step, so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube, but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family, and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.